2004-2005, I went to Davos, organized by World Economic Forum. And that Davos you know, changed you know, like, uh, the perspectives. And uh, as you said, I, I said like in the 1980s, I was in a bubble at that time, and Japan was number one. However, when I went there uh, in Davos, I thought that uh, Japan was always like a uh, non-existence. And they say the call like uh, Japan, nothing. They used to Japan bashing in 1980s because Japan was number one. And then there was Japan passing, people started to pass Japan. And then there was uh, something like Japan, nothing. You know, so there was no uh, 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 press, uh, uh, no like uh, uh, actual uh, uh, appearance of Japan uh, in those days. And I thought that the Japan was declining at that time. Um, you know, at the same time, I'm educating leader, leaders and also starting up companies and creating new industries. And how, however, in reality, Japan was losing in terms of the global presence. So what I decided to think about what I should do. You know, I've been working on like educating leaders and creating companies, and also like educating the whole Japan by disseminating information. However, uh, the the reality is that it, it, it was it is declining. So I thought that you know I should do something more. You know, like I I was quite happy with my family. I have five sons. <laughs> All of them are like boys, and then at the same time I have a you know like a good life. And I my company Globus and school is going doing well. Venture capital is doing well. And uh, however, I thought I should do more. And I even thought about becoming a politician, like to change Japan. But when I met quite a few friends of mine who are politicians, they are better. They are very talented, they're very smart, and uh, uh, they are quite well uh, educated, and uh, they're really good. So what I decided to, you know, the way entrepreneurs think about is that they don't worry about things that they cannot do. We just worry about things that we can do. So what I thought that I can do, I raised, listed three things. One is that I listed one first thing I did was I decided to support my friends who are politicians, like uh, Mr. Nishimura, Mr. Seko, and they are my same age, like Mr. Maihara, who was a foreign, former uh, foreign minister. And uh, they are really good. So uh, what I did was I went into their electoral districts, like, uh, and I said I campaign for them <laughs> in elections. And so I went all around the world, Japan to campaign for my friends who are politicians, and they have become real body, like they, you know, they have become real friends. And the second thing I did was I decided to speak up uh, in politics. Mo most of the like a private sector people, first of all, don't want to be associated with politicians. They don't want to campaign, and because they don't want to uh, uh, like uh, create enemies in, in politics and they don't want to stand up. But in case of myself, I decided to be engaged in politics, and at the same time, I decided to speak up in public. Uh, and then one uh, thing that I did uh, right after a Great East tsunami and earthquake was that I uh, debated against Mr. Masayoshi Song of SoftBank for three hours and 25 minutes, live streamed uh, to all around Japan, debating about nuclear energy policy. And it was a really like a, you know, I had a lots of storm, uh, like email storms and also Twitter storms, and uh, uh, there was some demonstration coming up to my family's house. But I decided to speak up for Japan. And third thing I did was uh, um, I decided to be present in global scenes. Like I decided to be a panelist speakers in Davos. So everything I attended, uh, every time I attend Davos, I always be a speakers. And also I speak for IPO, like uh, last year in Melbourne, I was at the GLC summit, I spoke, and now I'm speaking to the public as well. And uh, like uh, Forbes and also um, you know, Milken, I always try to be a speaker, because the presence of Japan will come up when you see that there are Japanese people acting globally, and then the presence will go up. In case of Tennis, like uh, uh, Nishikori is, if Nishikori is winning, like they, the presence of Japan will go up. In case of football as well, when Mr. 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 Okazaki of uh, Leicester you know, wins, like uh, the presence will go up. So you have to be there in, in global arena so that the presence will go up. So I did three things. And then at the same time, after I did three things, I was like uh, attending Davos. I started to think about, I should meet uh, global leaders. At Davos I met, like uh, Tony Blair and also Bill Clinton. But I've never seen any leaders from Japan, especially in politics. So I decided to talk to uh, former Prime Minister Nakasone, 
because uh, he, Mr. Nakasone, was one of the longest serving prime minister uh, in Japan. And so I thought I should talk to him. So I, I asked my friend of mine, and then he introduced me to meet um, former prime minister. And then the meeting with him changed the way I look at things. Uh, he said one thing quite interesting. He said that during his term as prime minister, which served one of the longest in Japan, he wanted to do two things, but he could not do. For him, he wanted to change the constitution, and second, he wanted to change the educational uh, system in Japan. And they asked him, why, like a, like a, like a supreme commander and the most uh, like a powerful person in Japan, how could, it, how could it change? And he said uh, that the public was not yet ready. So I started to think about, like, even the politician can change Japan, what sh can we do? <laughs> And then, so I think it's important to change the public. And how can we change the public? And then, so I started to think about the way to do it. So one solution was that, well, like, uh, why don't we ask some leaders to get together uh, from politics and also from private sectors, like a, like a Davos-type conference in Japan, and so that all the leaders will come and decide and discuss things and set direction of Japan, that may change the direction of Japan. So I started in 2009, a conference called G1 Summit. I will show you the video clip that will give you some better ideas about what, what I'm doing in G1. It's only about four minutes long.自慢精神というものがあります。批判よりも提案を。思想から行動へと。リーダーとしての自覚です。2011年に小渕沢で開催された G1サミットには私も参加しましたその後4年間にわたって交わされてきた議論がこの度100の行動として出版されたと聞いております
this is G1 in four minutes video. And if you look at the video, you see if you are Japanese people or well aware of Japanese figures, you can see that there's prime minister who has attended. And there are two, two other major prime minister, uh, ministers. One is uh, Ms. Mr. Aso, who is a deputy prime minister and some, uh, finance minister, as well as Mr. Suga, who is a chief cabinet secretary. And those three people, like a triangle, is now formulating the Japanese polit politics. And they all attended a, a G1. And then you see the eight figures who have, uh, who have emerged as G1 members, and they are the ministers. When we started in 2009, there was no ministers in G1 summit. And now we have more than eight or 10 ministers uh, forming, coming out of G1. And so the, actually they are changing Japanese politics. And then they are my friends, because I mentioned to you that I campaign for them uh, in their electoral districts. And then at the same time, like if you look at business figures, I counted as uh, billionaires. Um, there are more than 15, uh, 13 or 14 billionaires and families attending G1 summit. And then, um, so if you, in, Japan, in Japan, there are only about 40 plus uh, uh, billionaires. You can see that a quarter or, or a third of billionaires attend. And uh, as the, the head of the uh, 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 Keizai Doyu, which, which is a powerful uh, federation of CEOs, also attend. And if you look at the um, like academics, the, you saw the Dr. Yamanaka, who is a uh, Nobel laureate and uh, award laureate. And uh, you can see that there's a, a strength. You saw Educated 48, even like uh, some singers as well, and also famous sport uh, athletes and uh, famous um, cultural leaders. And you see those people have gathered and not only G1 Summit, we have a G1 Global Conference. I think some of you have attended G1 Global, which is English-only uh, conferences. You cannot speak Japanese, and you have to, all of you have to be able to speak in English. And in the podiums, we talk about uh, Japanese and also regional, like Asian and global issues. And uh, at the same time, we started G1 Venture, we talk about, which we talk about technology and innovation, and G1 CEO Executive Summit. And we have a G1 under 40, and we can see there are so many things going on. The purposes of it is, that, as I mentioned, to change the public, to change the politics, and to change the direction of Japan uh, to make Japan a better country. And so we feel that we have the responsibility uh, to the community, and uh, th therefore I started G1. Actually, we, we wrote a hundred action about tourism, and we set a clear goal of hitting 30 million people per year for interest into Japan. And that's what uh, we are working on. So uh, in that way, we can create more friends globally who understand about Japan. I think it, the tourism is the best way for them to learn about Japan, for us to make friends. So uh, that uh, we, I, I wrote about like a, a one is that I think it's important to uh, uh, make visa issues easier for people to, to come, or free visa, no visa is required. I think in Malaysia, there's, you don't need visa to come to Japan. And Philippines, gradually, like, we are loosening. Uh, Thailand, we have like, a, a abolished visa. So uh, gradually, we are um, working towards no visa uh, requirements to come to Japan, and uh, so that's what we are working on, and at the same time, you notice that most of the um, uh, figures, like uh, all the signage uh, in the in the JL or subways, are four languages now: Japanese, English, and Chinese, and Korean. I'm sorry, not Malaysian, but <laughs> not Tagalog. I'm sorry, but uh, you know there are more and more uh, uh, posture of welcome to those people, and that's important. And then I mentioned not only. Uh, tourism, but also we mentioned about contents. Like uh, uh, when I interview those people who come to Globus and who come to Japan, and they quite a few people mention about uh, comics, like manga. You know, they like manga, like uh, uh, and then that content is also going to be very important. And also that kind of uh, like a cool Japan initiative I wrote in Hundred Action is going to be needed. And that way we can bridge uh, the gap between like uh, foreign countries and also with Japan. And then that includes more uh, 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 
uh, st uh, students coming from abroad are going to be more welcome. So that's what we're working on in Globus. Like uh, Globus, you know that full-time MBA, everything that we provide in Japanese is identical in English. And, uh, and that way, so whoever can study, uh, speak Japanese and English can interchange uh, those uh, curriculum easily. And uh, so that we will try to make our education uh, much more uh, accessible for those people who are living abroad. And next year we are starting English MBA program online. So you don't have to come to Japan to be able to study Globus. And that's what we are working on. And uh, so that uh, the contents, culture, tourism, education is all interconnected. And that will create the image of Japan. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that you notice the changes happening in Japan. I think it's important that not only the politicians are changing. I think it's important to be, see a private people like myself is devoting to the community. And I think that's the more important. I've been talking to quite a few investors and mentioning about how Japan is changing the direction and setting. And uh, I think it's important to mention from an individual entrepreneur, devoting my time and talking about what is going on. And uh, so you see, it's not only some small people, but they gradually, lots and lots of people are joining forces uh, for changing. And so that's what really we should talk about in terms of entrepreneurship and innovation.